Johnson, come on, I go. What dude. is up, everybody? <laughs> it's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is going to be a wild one. I can already tell from the pre-show because it's an East Coast, West Coast. It's a sales and marketing smackdown. We are talking about the best real estate objections, and we have the uh, we have the the Vulpinator, the evil bald ninja here to to help me destroy objections from the marketing angle. And backing up, Aaron, or Greg is Aaron Wittenstein on the sales side. Our other uh, our brother from another mother on the east coast and so it's a uh, what would you call it aaron the bald and the beautiful so the we're going bald to uh, in the beautiful the bald and the beautiful <laughs> the bald so this and is the beautiful. Gonna be a wild one i don't even know if we i'm gonna get a word in edgewise no nope no nope. so anyway <laughs> all right Just, so uh, no. first of all this is the place where you get actionable ideas insight and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom and become the rock star agent in your market and we're talking about how to handle objections like a rock star today so first of all let's bring in the uh, the other rock star Mm. One of many, actually, on this call, Greg McDaniel, the junior grandmaster himself. What's up today? What up, Johnson? What up, Wittenstein? What up, Volpe? Man, I've got a house full of awesome people here today, and I've got to tell you, I don't know what Aaron is doing with Gumby over there, but that should be remained and never be seen. Uh, but I am in a good mood. It's Friday. Uh, I'm going to be hanging out with uh, Lily this afternoon, heading over to the other side of the bay. We're going to get in a hotel room. We're going to be getting some good food and hanging out. It's going to be... I don't know. It's going to be a great day. And Matt, I have something you don't have. I have something you don't have. Oh, bam! Starbucks card. <laughs> you know that? That smells success right there. Now, I got mm -hmm. um, Lori Davey. Uh, she's out of Texas. She wrote me this really nice card. Uh, I spent some time with her, uh, was it Saturday? For a few minutes. Gave her some great tips. So, Lori, knuckles to you. She put what we uh, talked about into action. She sent me a thank you card. It goes into my stack of thank you cards right here. Thank you very much. It always pays to give and pay it forward, guys. So that's what we're going to do in this show. Now, I'm not going to give control back mm -hmm. to Johnson because he's going to try to talk the whole damn time. So I'm just going to keep talking until someone tries to cut me off. No, I'm kidding. Matt, back to you. All right. Well, let's uh, – let's... <laughs> Let's start with a quick introduction because obviously, Gene, you're here with us on a regular basis. I feel like people are getting to know you better. We call you the evil bald ninja because you are a marketing expert. Uh, and so we're, we'll get into uh, what we we're talking about pre-show in a second because I do want to tell people about that because it's really cool stuff. But we'll go very deep down that rabbit hole and I don't want to get that, you know, start off with that essentially. So, that sounds good. Um, yeah, and then we've got Aaron Wittenstein with us, the master of expired ob objections and master of all things expired listings oriented. Uh, guys, we take questions from his Facebook group all the time, the lead gen scripture objections. So I know a lot of that you guys watching and listening are already familiar with Aaron. So let's jump right in with an objection real quick before we get too, uh, too deep into just uh, mutual admiration society. Thank you. I love so let you. Me throw, uh, let me <laughs> I, I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> and we love you too. Within, within limits. Within, uh, like, a little, little bit of love, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, with it, like a doctor writes down, WNL, within normal limits. Well, right. Right, you know, Aaron did say that he has no pants on, so we're asking him to stay uh, neck up in, uh, only. No staying – no. Did you sit your butt back down? Okay. <laughs> it's the glare. It's the glare. It's the glare. Why is – Gene, why is your glare less than mine? Because I, ha I actually am not completely bald today. I didn't take it to the wood this morning, so um, I have a little bit of hair on there, just a tiny bit. That explains it. That explains <laughs> it. it He's got, it's not, so it, I'd say it's fair to say it's a 2 o'clock shadow. <laughs> so right. Yeah, it's exactly right. 205 shadow. That's exactly right. right. Cool. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so, so here's the idea of the show. So Gene and I are going to give the marketing uh, side of things. In, in other words, how do you destroy objections before they come up? Uh, Greg and Aaron are going to take the sales side. They're going to talk about how do you handle objections once they do come up when you're actually face to face or on the phone with the prospect. And we're going to handle, um, well, we'll probably get to two of them. Hopefully we'll get to more than that. But uh, we've got a list of the 21 most common objections in real estate that we're going to destroy in a sales and marketing smackdown. So this is going to be a lot of fun. So let's start off with one. So the objection is we're interviewing other salespeople and we'd like to think over the decision of listing with you. Aaron, I love how you handle this. So I'm going to start with you on this one. Well, this may completely do what we don't want to do. You may see what's below the shirt here. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, I, got, I got you. I know where you're going with this, but go ahead. I can't believe you started with this one. So I'll be like, so, all right. So you think, you, so you want to think about it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Okay. So my wife actually just called me a couple minutes ago. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go step outside, give her a call. I'll be right back. Is he for real right now? And then I just leave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I come, I'm dead serious. I come back and 10 or 15 minutes and let they think about it. 
I love that because you literally <laughs> fooled Greg in the delivery of that script. It was so natural, yeah, so I'm perfect. Like, I'm Greg's like, like, is he leaving the show right now? I'm like, the fuck? Are you serious? That's it. Last time ever on the show. We're yeah, it just goes to show you, deal. Aaron, how, how good you are at the delivery of that objection handler. That, that, that was perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. I mean, I don't do it all the time, but when I do it, it really works because it's like – one time they're like, no, 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 we'll go upstairs and we'll think about it. I'm like, all right, cool. Whatever you guys want. I got to call my wife. And I, I just wound mm -hmm. up by calling her. Yeah, it was, uh, it works. I mean, it really does work. You just got to have a lot of balls to do that one. <laughs> I love it. I got to go. I got to call my cats. I mean, what am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I got, I got to call my fur two furry idiots. I'll be right back. I hear so me. East, co e East coast, right. one West coast, none. What? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. I don't well, think you're beating on a. I don't we think we, we got it. We got to give it to Greg. We got to throw it over to Greg first. So what's what's your what is your objection handler for that particular one? Um, well, I ask them. So they want to interview other agents. So I ask them. Okay. So help me under. What I do is I keep. I just I pepper them with additional questions. Okay. So what are you looking for? What was your last experience like? You know, when can you make a decision? What you know, what are the deciding factors? You know, I encourage them. I say, hey, that's a great idea. You know, there's a lot of really, other really good agents out there. Who who else are you interviewing? Because then I'll start picking them apart without picking them apart. And I'll start going to my value add proposition. Well, we're going to do, you know, Bob and Sue Smith. Oh, they're great agents, but you know what happens with, you know, teams that are husband and wife, they generally vacation together. And if they go on vacation, so does your listing. You know, our team doesn't do that. And I go into my, why, why we're better for that, how we'll always have a partner on hand or on boots on ground. Uh, if they want, you know, any kind of um, reaffirm, like, so. I'll just jump into my booklet here. I'll start talking about how we do professional photos. We do professional catering. I really start adding the value add proposition and consistently talking to them why our team is a better choice because you get seven people, seven, seven people for the price of one and so on and so forth. So I keep, I always do the three deep. There's a problem. I'm asking going to ask you three to five additional questions. I'm going to figure out what your true reasoning for interviewing more people are. Maybe you've never done this before. Maybe you just don't fucking like me. I don't know. But you know what? If, whatever the, the thing is here, but I'll also try to interview, I'll also turn it around on them and say, well, I'm glad you're doing that because I want to make sure that I'm going to be the right agent for you as well. I'm going to make sure we're a right fit. So reverse yeah. psychology, pimp slap them across the brain pan and then move forward. And if they're not, if they're not, if they're going to be a fucking waste of my time, I move forward. I'm away from them. <laughs> Do you ever go more than three deep? Are we like talking about five questions? deep? <laughs> We we're talking about questions, right? Oh, yeah, question. Wow. Oh wow. Let's, <laughs> well, let's I'm keep serious. This. Let's I'm keep serious. This semi clean. No. Come on. Oh, wow. No, they, they, no they, do you go more than three deep on the questions ever? Yes, constantly. I, you guys have horrible, deep. dirty, dirty minds. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to you guys. I'm oh. asking a legitimate question, and you guys are taking it out horrible. <laughs> wow. Shame on that was you. Funny. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, a, it's all it's all of us. So all the problem. We're we're the problem here. Never mind what you were writing on your. I just ask quality questions. I just yeah, ask exactly. quality questions. Uh -huh. All right. So going five deep. Uh, I like to go seventeen deep. That's really that's what that's the right that's the right rhythm for me when I'm talking about clients wanting to think about it. I want to go seventeen deep on those clients. Uh, so Gene, let's give the marketing perspective. So this is an amazing book, by the way, guys. It's called <laughs> Ask by Ryan Levesque. If you're if you're in the uh, if you're in the marketing world, you pay attention to digital marketing, you will uh, you will know this because it's all over everywhere. But he makes a great point in here, which is that people have a hard time telling you what they want, but they're really good at telling you what they don't like and mm -hmm. what they bought in the past. So if there if there's a couple questions that I would ask, if I had to handle that on the fly, I would say, you know, this sounds great. I mean, you know. It's it's great to really think deeply about who you want to work with and make sure it's a good fit for you. I'm just curious, like what um, what do you know you don't want? Like what are the things that you've heard or, or that you've you know maybe worked with realtors in the past that you didn't like? And they can go on, you know, ad nauseum about things they don't like. Uh, and then you can just ask them, you know, hey, I'm just curious, like how did you pick the last time you you know bought or sold? How did you pick who you worked with? You know, and then you'll get a sense of like what's important to them. Did they go with a family member because they trusted them or did they go with someone that was super experienced, the neighborhood expert, whatever, doesn't matter. Just mm -hmm. it gives you an, like some insight essentially into uh, into what their thinking process is for why they hired who they hired. So those are two key questions that you can ask there. You can just go too deep. Just go too deep. Not, you know, just, yeah, I'm, I, I, we won't go down that path any no, farther. No, 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 no. But uh, ask, Gene, I'm ask curious. before you do that. Ask before you go too deep, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, we've got to stop that. Okay, <laughs> Gene, let's talk about the uh, – how do you destroy that objection from even coming up? How can you deliver so much value before you show up and during the listing presentation that they never even ask that question? 
So, well, okay, well, I, I wanted to take this down a different road with you because you brought up a really good point that I kind of wanted to exploit. And that, well, first, of all, for, for, first of all, the first thing I would say is that I would go the Tommy Boy route, you know, and I would say, well, you can get a good look at a T-bone by sticking your head up a bull's ass. Right? You know that, you know that one? That one? Uh, no, that's not true. I'd rather take that's, the butcher's word for it. That's right. <laughs> uh, so, you, listen, you throw a diversion, a little bit of confusion in there, and they go, what just happened? And you go, here, sign here. Right? So, no, but, uh, but you brought up the whole thing about the, you know, ask. And I think an important element of that ask is, and I, I, I think you sort of said it, but is, is evaluating their pain points. And so, when, when they start to tell you the things that they don't like and the things that have happened in the past, there's an opportunity for you to swoop in and address a couple of those with, with some of your tools, whether it be marketing or your expertise in the area or the fact that you've done 700 transactions, whatever that is. And I think that allow from a sales perspective, if you want to go deep from a sales perspective, I think that's a good way to take those objections and turn them in your favor. Yeah, I agree. I like well, that. The thing yeah. is, too, is that when you ask those questions on the tour and you figure out how their thought process goes, this is actually something I learned from my coach, you guys know, Andy, and um, pretty much the questions that you ask on the tour guide you along the way. So tell me, how many houses did you look at before before you bought this one? Why did you pick this house? And you kind of get an idea of how they made that decision before mm -hmm. you even sit down and have a conversation with them by them telling you their story, which what happens then is that you know already how they want to be sold. Yep. Yeah, that's so yeah, they that's, say they exactly at what that's, yeah. that's exactly yeah. what the book Ask is about. It's yeah, yeah it's revealing their sales and decision making process so that yeah. then you can turn around and present and adjust your presentation, which in the, this is in a marketing context, like a sales letter. But that all that is is just a written form of what you're doing in a listing presentation. You're having a sales conversation. So yeah, if you go in armed with the right information right off the bat, mm -hmm. then you know how to adjust on the fly. Oh, yeah. Someone says, I've looked at 537 homes. You know you're probably not signing it right there. Just, yeah. But if they say, we looked at two houses, we bought it, you know that's a good one right there. You're going to have to cr crush yeah. with, uh, you know, be straightforward with numbers. So, no, that's a great it. point. Great point. Great point. <laughs> Mark, guy. Uh, okay. Well, let's take a, a quick second. And uh, so, guys, first of all, Aaron, uh, we are, you know, producing. We've got Expired Mastery Elite that is taking, like, yes. pre-registrations. We launched that first week of September. Uh, why should people go check that out real quick? Because it's awesome. No, so here's the deal is that if you guys don't know, I've been doing this for four years now. Moved here from New York to Chicago. Started working expires November 13th or November 2013. And I didn't take any listings for three months. I'd sit there and cold call for 12 hours a day. And boom, February, I was only, I haven't even been here for a year yet. I took eight listings, all of them expired listings. This year we'll take, so far we've taken 37 listings. Half of those have been expired. So I'm sorry, more than half. We're at 22 expired listings for the year, which roughly comes out to out here like $10 million in production. So I'm going to teach you every single thing that you need to know in regards to scripting, objection, handling, systems, uh, mindset, time management, so many things that are going to make you actually make money. And we're going to teach you how to make hundreds of thousand dollars a year using expireds and what do we say if, if they think it sucks i'll cold call for them for a couple hours yeah you'll be your your, your their isa for a day isa for for a day three hours <laughs> right. three hours That's right my, my lead generation take that prospecting time away from your family away from your wife and away kids away from my wife and for kids to give it to you That's right That's right. because i don't think it sucks that's right. All right. So that's expiredmasteryelite.com. And Greg, we'll talk about what, who the show is sponsored by in a second. And then Gene, how do people reach out to you? GeneVolpe.com. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like a little radio jingle right there. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you won't forget it. You won't forget. Listen, I, I, my, my daughter will tell you, she's walking over here now in the background. When, when, when they were younger, I used to have to teach them my cell phone number. And I would say 610-952-1081. <laughs> so they would they would sing it, but they would never forget it. They would giggle, and they remembered my number from when they were three years old. So oh, that's funny. <laughs> I was thinking I was thinking something like eight hundred eight 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 Gene. Yeah, something bald like that. Ninja. Bald <laughs> but ninja. Yeah, bald ninja. ninja. There we go. All right, so GeneVolpe.com. All right, and then Greg, the show is sponsored by. Get now business, everybody. Guys, if you don't want to do any door knocking or cold calling, we have the antidote to your pain and suffering. And no, it is not a drink. It is Get Now Business, where you guys will learn how to do do real estate, get commissions within 90 days. If you just listen to the words that come out of our mouths, you won't have to do any role, real scripting or role playing with us. Matt and I will do it for you. You can sit in there and be a voyeur and suck in the good knowledge uh, oh. and then be able to uh, go put it into your business ASAP. If you want to do expireds, Go to Aaron's. If you want to get business without having to do cold calls or door knocking, come to ours. If you want to do both, do both.
Uh, yeah, yeah, it's sponsored. Yeah, by we need to come up with a. We need to come up with a Greg and Aaron and Matt package, uh, like a, just a package deal where they get I something like uh, all of us. So, all right, guys. Uh, so let's jump in back into another objection, guys. First of all, thank you everybody that's watching on the live broadcast. Yeah. There's too many people to mention, uh, but we really, really appreciate it, guys. If you really enjoy it and you think that your fellow agents would get value out of it. <clears throat> Make sure to share this broadcast right now onto your Facebook, uh, your Facebook profile, a page, uh, share it in a place where people can get to it and they can get uh, value out of it too, because we're talking about stuff that will actually make you money and help you. Um, mm -hmm. So let's jump mm -hmm. right back in. Well, so let's, on. this is uh, uh, Matt, hold on. Was it? Yeah, Vic has so. a question. Aaron, is your program a one time or monthly subscription? I'm trying to work my way up to doing expireds. Okay, so. so it is a one-time. May how do we put it? It's it's a one-month program. It's four weeks. I it may stretch out. I think I've been putting the material together. It may turn into 90-minute classes or may turn into five-week classes. Just to add some other stuff in there. But it's a one-month program. And then for anybody who's interested, after that we have a group. Can we have a group scripting and accountability course called Trajectory? You know that we kind of add on if you want to add on more to like a monthly access. So, yep. but you do have all the materials forever and for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Ever, ever, and ever, 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 ever. As long as the internet exists and Kajabi yes, exists. For at least seven years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whichever comes first. <laughs> well, there's no there's no Mayan apocalypse. We we managed to make it past that unscathed. So I feel good. I feel I think we're gonna be around for a little bit. Unless there's some other ancient race that has a prophecy that's that's you know seven years from now. So we'll see. Well, bald guys. Bald guys? Bald You're guys. gonna take over the world? Gene and I are taking over the world. Okay. Got yeah, it. Got that it. will be a scary place. Then we're it will be. Stay away. Yeah. A lot yeah, of I, there, will be, there will be a lot of forced head shaving. <laughs> Johnson, get ready. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. <laughs> so objection number two. Another agent said they could get us more money. Greg, let's start with you. Fuck them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so another agent says you can get more money. Okay. Well, what what, do you, what does your net goal look like? What are you guys trying to obtain? Is it speed or is it cash? Because I want to under because money they're going to say money no matter what. It all comes to, down the almighty dollar. Um, there are a lot of unique ways that you can. Getting that cat. Are they looking to sell the house for the highest price ever in that neighborhood for bragging rights? Or are they looking to net a certain amount of money so that because they have a bills or they have to move on or they have to put it down for the next property or invest or whatever they're trying to do? So I try to identify what their true or true meaning for that comment is. Well, they can get me more money. Okay. Is that sales price or is that net commission back to you? What's more important to you? And then they go down and you just do your standard pitch. At least I do. I do a standard pitch of what we do, how you know you can divest the amount of money you spend into us. So instead of spending it with one person and putting all your eggs in one basket, invest in all seven of us where we can work for seven times harder for you and get them for the same amount of money. You don't have to hire seven agents because if you want this type of service, you're going to have to usually pay more money for it with other teams. And then I do a, I do a little bit of a commission cutting I do, but it also it, it net, ultimately nets me more money. So what I'll do is I say, you know what, this is what we'll do for you. We usually charge five, but for you I'll charge four percent if one of the McDaniel Callahan team members brings in the buyer. We'll do it for four percent versus five. We'll put a whole percent back into your pocket, and then they're like, oh okay, yeah, that sounds great. So fuck it, okay, I'll either make two and a half percent, or if my team member comes in, I make four. Okay. <laughs> And right. but they, they only they see feel like they got something out of it. They feel like they got four percent. And that's where they focus on. They don't focus on the five anymore. They just see the four. So right. that's it usually it works very, very well. And I automatically start using us, we team, you know, mm -hmm. you know, verbiage and it's talking about how we're gonna go through this together and these are our next steps. And as we go through the process, you're gonna talk to Eileen, our team manager, I'll be around. I do all of this stuff as a I'm presuming that I'm already going to work with them and they start to, and I'm nodding and I'm shaking my head. I'm leading them down the path of working together subconsciously yeah. and it works. Yeah, it really does. Love it. Gene, let's reverse the order. Let's go with Gene next marketing perspective. How do you destroy that objection before it comes up? Another agent said they could get us more money. You know, I don't, that one is more, I don't know that I would take that from a marketing perspective. I think from a marketing perspective, you just want to certainly, certainly let people know over a longer period of time that you're an expert in your field, right? Real yeah. estate's my game. I'm good at what I do because that's, this is one element. What, if I was an agent, what I would do, and first of all, I would be, I need to be completely sure that my comp, comparable market analysis skills were on point. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I would say that, then I would say to the seller, this, this is what 
these things tell me. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not making up numbers. This tells me that your house is going to go for $300,000, not because I want to make six hundred grand. I mean, for me, I want to make you more money because it makes me more money. Let's call it what it is. I'd rather sell your house for $5 million. But the reality of it is, is that the houses in your neighborhood that look like yours or that have this and don't have that are going for about two eighty. So if they're telling you three twenty, I think that's fantastic. But my expertise now, what you have to do is take it back and figure out if you think I'm right and I'm going to get it done quick. Because if he's wrong at three twenty, it's going to sit there for four months. If I'm right, you're getting your money and it's coming out. Right? It's going to happen quick. So at this point, it's a matter of you believing that I got the skills to get a CMA and tell you what the real number is versus inflating it. That that's on you, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's 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 very similar to how I would handle it. I would probably go down the road of explaining that a lot of you know homes that are on the market for more than three or four weeks get the perception that there something's wrong with them. A lot of you know eighty percent of the time, your first offer or the first couple of offers end up being your best offers, and uh, and yeah, just kind of leading them down that path of educating them on how the market really works. Not because this is how realtors want it to be. And not because we want to sell your home so quickly that, you know, you leave money on the table. It's because of buyers. It's buyers mentality that drives this whole thing. Right. So, Aaron, how would you handle it? I'd tell him to go list with that agent and call me in six months. <laughs> <laughs> East Coast. Represent. No, oh, no, no, no. That is no, I, no, I mean, no, I, no, I've done that where they said they're going to list. And I'd be like, I'd be like, how did they come up with that number? And the thing is, is why don't we give them a call right now? This is if you want to go really ballsy. You say, why don't we give them a call right now? We'll see if they guarantee they take the listing and never ask you for a price modification. If they ask you for a price modification, their commission gets cut in half. Do you feel comfortable making that phone call? Like that's if Ooh, I really want to go man, crazy. Good. Yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is, is typically I never get that objection ever. Like I never do because I bring my iPad when I my I could old iPad Pro right here with the keyboard, mm -hmm. and I actually do the market this the um the market the CMA and numbers right in front of them, and you can't really question when you're looking at the data right in front of your face. If right. they say this agent says they can get me fifty grand more, show me where it is. Mm -hmm. I don't understand this. Uh, the market that I'm looking at here is it shows your home is worth $325,000. This agent's trying to get you 350. Can you show me here? I'm showing you empirical data right in front of me. Can you show me how it is? And I'll gladly take the listing for 350 and that they push and push and push. Here's the thing you guys have to keep in mind is that when you're taking a listing that may feel slightly overpriced, it's still motivation driven. So people say, you know what, we will give you the listing at 350 when I feel it's worth 325 because the other agent will, and they need to sell the home within a, a couple of weeks where the motivation is there, where you know they're gonna modify that price down. So what I've learned is I used to turn down a lot of listings because they didn't price exactly where I want. Now, as long as you have that proper conversation prior saying, okay, we're gonna take this listing, it, X price, but my suggestion is to have it listed at Y. So we're going to write this down right here that we have this conversation, and I'll always get the price modifications within two weeks. So yeah, there's a couple right. different ways to go about it. Because they're prepared for it. Yeah, you're setting exactly. the expectation right up front. Hey, if, it, if we don't get the activity that we want, if we don't get the offers that we want within two weeks, we it's pre-agreed we're dropping it to this. Yeah, well, you yeah, come if, back together as a, as a team. You put that in the yeah. listing document. If we don't have a show in a day or a signed contract within 14 days, we come together again and we reevaluate what the market's telling us. You know, then we'll we'll adjust appropriately. Yeah. You know, and that's that's why it's in writing in that listing contract. Can I can I add to that? Can I add to that? Yeah. yeah. So so oh, I'll, no so no I'll, you can't. I'll, <laughs> well, no. I'm going anyway. Wait, you're my team. We're, yeah, I love you. Yeah, add whatever you want. No, no. Add, add which I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> I, lo well, I love you. Quick. Too. You're quick. Yo, you're at two brute, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but with that, with that two week reduction, so he, Aaron brought something up that, that when I do the marketing piece, I train some of my agents to do, and, and, and that's like this. When you have a really nice marketing package that you push that home out after you list it and you're able to track the analytics on the back end, then you're in, the, you're in a position to set that expectation up with a little more firepower. And here's, here's what I would do. I'd say, great, 350 is a great number. I make more money. I'd love to sell it at 350. It's not going to sell at 350 because CMA shows me two, 300 grand. We just did it. But here's what I'm going to do for you. I know because of my analytics that I can get 2,000 sets of eyeballs on this property in the first 30 days or two weeks or whatever your number is. And would you be okay that if we, if we get 2000 eyeballs on it and we don't get any phone calls or we get three agents that go out, nobody calls back and there's, you know, whatever that is, when I have that data, or as Aaron said, the empirical data, when I come back to you in 20 days and I show you that, are you okay talking to me about my CMA again? 
And, mm -hmm. and at that point, that's very difficult when you go, look, this, our video tour got 3000 views. We had 25, you know, uh, uh, discussions about it. I had three feedbacks from the agents that visited, said it was a little out of their price range or a little high for the area. And now, now I'm back in front of you saying, look, we talked about this. I warned you, we wasted 30 days. Can we do something else now? And that may mm -hmm. look like a price reduction. So, well, you know, the, uh, the flip side of that coin is the fact that what if they do sell for that higher price? I had that happen to me last summer. Yeah. My guy wanted to do 25,000 more. Dude, what's the worst case scenario? They get a little bit of an ego bump. You make a few extra bucks. They get to yeah. look like a hero in front of their spouse. Then they can actually put more fucking money down on the next house. So you win double. Give them yeah. the little pat on the head. Yeah. Let them, you know, slap them on the butt and get them out the door. I mean, you don't win. You don't lose on either one of these sides. You have to take your own you know, ego out of it 100% of the time because yeah. they, they have studied mm -hmm. it like an inmate. You well, know, I think it should be easy for those people. I mean, there's, there's no big egos between us four. No, no, not at all. Not That's at why all. I meet Johnson all the time. That's right. All right. So, uh, so Jordan has a great question. He actually had two great questions, but I wanted to cover the first one first. Um, so how do you communicate with a seller? And Aaron, you've got a great kind of system for this. Yeah, uh, I, I, I sit down, like this is part of what I explain when I'm on the listening consultation. I tell them exactly, here's what's going to happen. We are going to talk every Wednesday. If we don't talk on Wednesday, we're going to talk on Thursday. And if we don't talk on Thursday, you fire me on Friday. Then I take the actual listing agreement out and I'll write right on the agreement. Seller can cancel the agreement at any time with no cost or penalty. So I'll kind of like push that towards them so they see it. And then what I'll say, here's what our conversation weekly is going to look like. Uh, we're going to talk. I'm going to give you a shout between 12 and 4 on Wednesday. The first, uh, we're going to look and see what feedback feedback happened on the property that week, you know, any activity that we've had, we're going to go over all those showings. Then we're going to go over the market, see exactly what's been going on in the market. You know, if there's anything new on uh, that's came up, anything under contract, anything that's sold that would affect the, our, our sale price. We're going to look over all the marketing that's done last week, everything we're going to do the following week. And we're also going to have you rate me on a scale of one to 10 with of course, 10 being the best and one being the worst. Does that sound like it would work for you? Mm -mm. That's great. Love it. So every uh, Wednesday, but the see. thing is though, you got to talk every Wednesday. You have mm -hmm. to, if you're going to commit to it, you have to do it. You have to, and that's the yep. easiest way to get price modifications. So. Yeah. Very cool. All right. And, and Greg, I know what the answer is for, for you guys. You don't have a set schedule, but you communicate with them often and you're asking them in the listing consultation, like what, what is their preferred method of communication, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I sat down with a guy named Steve and his wife the other day and I asked them that exact question and they looked at each other and looked back at me like, you know, you're the first agent that's ever asked us that. And that's something that we have, we have always wanted to be asked by a real estate agent because we think there's a lot of useless real estate agents out there. And I'm like, yes, there are, but none of the people that live, watch this show, nobody no. that watches this show. <laughs> Gary, all the other, all the other stuff. Yeah. But not this one, mm -hmm. not these agents. So you, I, so you ask them, you ask them. How Hmm? You, you yeah, ask I ask them how they want to be. I love that. You, I love that. Do you want to be I love that. With? Who should I be communicating with? What, what frequency do you want to be communicated with? Because if they, if they have a meeting uh, from 12 until 4 on Wednesdays, fuck, they're not they're going to communicate with me. So I say, right. Aaron, should I talk to you or your wife? Should it be text, phone call, you know, Facebook message, you know, WeChat? I mean, what, what would you like? And then we commun and then I communicate with them via that device and that time frame and that frequency. And they do – it's – it's like getting a custom built, you know, device for you. I mean, that it's their language, their timing, their everything. It's now, hey, now here's how that works. Here, here's how that works in real life. Greg, you have yes. amazing admin staff that can follow through on a custom plan for every seller, and they're very, well, extremely, I can do my own damn self too. organized. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like for most agents that are working solo, Aaron, like your your system of like just scheduling a certain time frame where you're going to reach yeah. out to them, and, and obviously still ask them like what what method they want and who you talk to. That very very good stuff. But I do like that. Like for most agents, it's a little bit easier to pull off. Like, hey, here's my system. I will reach out to you and contact you during this time frame every single week. How would you like me to reach out to you? And who would you like yeah. to talk to? And skipping that last question about the frequency will help because you don't have to then have a different frequency for every single client no, yeah, it's, no I, you, you do have to have a different frequency for every single client i know this is where we client. disagree i know and i'm yeah. i'm one still doing real estate but, so but it, <laughs> oh. fuck wow. Nice. Shots fired. Yeah, shots wow you guys are on the same team <laughs> I west know. coast well, is imploding I west coast is imploding no it's not yeah, exactly ah, <laughs> east coast oh my god going. Well, but you know what? Listen, let me let me let me clean that up a little bit because I think Greg makes a good point. I think Matt's got a good point. And you know, you're we and this is the same thing in social media. We've talked before that 
you know, the, my Facebook followers will be more tolerant of my content and, and how often I do it than say Aaron's is. And so I have to play to that base based off of what they tell me they want. So Greg's, Greg's real world might be that some people want, want stuff every two days where Matt says, look, I, it's every seven days, man, I'm busy. And Matt's, Matt's people might be okay with that where Greg's people are just like, and that could be all about setting expectation too. But I feel like you mm -hmm. got to play to that base and give them, you know, I mean, here's reality. If you want to make that $35,000 commission, you're sort of right. going to have to make that extra phone call, I guess, if, if they want it, right, in order to keep them happy. Right. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, to be clear, I'm not knocking the way that Matt was talking about, you know, how, you know, how, how he scheduled it. We, the, he and I are right. Like we do do things there very differently. He's very organized. Like I don't schedule anything because I know Matt will schedule it and that's how his brain works. And I'm just different that I am willing to fly by the seat of my pants for my clients. It's just my way of doing business, you know, and Matt is much more logical and that works for the, the high level people that he works with because they're more like plan it out, make sure there's a schedule to it make it happen my, my folks are well they're not they're not slumming it but they jive with they're my consumers. personality yeah huh they're, yeah. well they're consumers versus working with business people yes very much so so yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, i wasn't knocking you and i know that came across very rude and my deepest that apology did. my friend did, did, i know and I, felt, but I, immediately I felt bad i felt so bad good i'm glad i'm glad <laughs> so i don't have to yell at you after the show i appreciate crying. it he's crying but here's the thing guys is no matter what whichever way you stay in touch with them the moral of the story is stay in touch with them Speak yeah. with them on a weekly basis. It doesn't matter if you do it three times a week at seven o'clock in the morning or you text them once, just stay in touch with them. No matter what, we all do it differently, but we're all, Greg and I, I mean, we may do it totally differently, but are you talking to your client every week? Mm -hmm. Hey, so am I. So yeah. it's different, but we're not pissing anybody off. It's just, it's different. So just talk to your clients. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah, exactly. it. You can't have go ghost on your clients. It doesn't work that way. No, they go oh, ghost God. on you and you lose money. Exactly. So, so yes. Bad. Like mm, okay, <clears throat> so let's uh, let's go with this one. Um, we only want to give you a 60-day listing, and Aaron, let's let's start with you on this one. I don't know how much you run into this, but do you do you run awesome. into this? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do you one better. Okay, I'm gonna give you a minute by minute listing because you can cancel your agreement with me at any time. Nice, nice. Mm. That's a great approach. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> but it's true. I don't care if they want to give me a 60-day listing. If I can't sell your listing in 60 days, it's overpriced or I suck at my job. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very true. It's I the truth. It. If you if you need more than sixty days, you did something wrong. Yeah. I'll take yep. a thirty day listing for all I care because the thing is, once I once you show how good of a job you're doing, they're not going to fire you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if they say a third, I don't care. It makes no difference to me. I found all I want them to do is sign the contract. Then I show them what we do and how we do it, and they don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. All right, well, you can do the you can 24, 24 hour listing agreement. We've we've talked about that before on the show. When in yeah. twenty four hours, if you haven't shown enough value, but in that twenty four hours, you have it planned out, and you just yes. bombard them, air, land, and sea with everything you have coming at them. So they're just literally blown away. There's like, oh, I can't believe I get all this value in twenty four hours. What are you gonna do in twenty four hours? What about you know one hundred and twenty mm -hmm. days or whatever the ninety days or whatever the time frame is? Well, and, and let's talk about that because that that's a that is a marketing challenge, right? It's a, mm -hmm. it is a it is a marketing mission for you to put their home up on the market and, and get it sold. And that, that is, those are marketing activities. The way that you're bringing value as a listing agent is by being a marketing specialist and getting homes sold, right? So it's a, it's a marketing challenge. And when most agents, the, there's a lot of agents that are good in the business because they're good salespeople, but then they don't know how to market property. So they're very good at, at the people part, but then they still just put a sign in the yard get it up on the MLS and they have maybe an assistant that can help them like get it up on some different websites. And, you know, like it, there's still nothing extra there for marketing. And I think there's, there's only so much that you can do with objection handling. If you don't have anything to say, it doesn't matter how smoothly and convincingly you say it, if there's no substance to it. So Gene, that, that's where I think like the marketing perspective comes in, because if you really want to show that value, you do have to have your ducks in a row when it comes to actually marketing the property and knowing what you're going to do, having a plan, knowing why you're doing that, and having some things in there that separate you from from other agents. Yeah, I agree. I think one thing I found too is that if you play out the 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 technical side of it hard enough, but you're smooth about it, it gets people to a point where they're almost confused, but not quite confused, but they're saying to themselves, Wow, that's a lot of stuff. I didn't really understand what you're saying, but that's a ton of places and outlets. And how do you do all that? And I, I think it's all about the more marketing tools you have in your belt, the better you're going to look at the end of the day. And you need to have a process in place that will help 
facilitate that so you can still kiss the babies and shake shake the hands, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need it's almost like the thud factor. It's like um, like people have a problem with long sales pages all the time. Well, who's going to read that? People who are interested are going to read it and the That's rest right. of them are going right. to go, oh, my God, there's so much value here. Let me just skip down to the bottom and find out how much it is and buy it. I mean, so there, there's two types of people. There, there are people that you'll run into that will want to really dig into the weeds and they'll really want to know and understand exactly what you do to market homes. And then there's there's others where they'll look at your presentation and your marketing plan and hopefully your pre-listing package and stuff like that that you that you send them or bring with you. And they'll go, oh, I, I, this is way too much, but I get it. Like it's the thud factor. You just you smack me in the head with like the, the like a ream of papers worth of all the stuff you're going to do. I get it. Like you've got that handled. Like it yep. just that, that's what we're talking about. Like the, the difference between handling an objection versus destroying the objection. That's the difference. It's the overwhelming them with value. I love mm -hmm. what and you it's just, there. That's good. And it's a lot of stuff where it's all preemptive strikes, you know, like you guys are talking yes. about. For example, my 150 point marketing plan that goes out, I send that out along with my pre listing package, which, by the way, you can purchase or get for free with expiredmastery.com. It comes with it, expiredmasteryelite.com. But yes. with stuff like this, I bomb them with everything before I go. I send them my 150 point marketing plan, my pre listing package for expired, my expired success portfolio. I tell them, please look at all this information prior. And then the first thing I do is when I sit down, one of the first parts I use in my listing consult is is did you have an opportunity to look at the information? And then I say, do you have any questions about marketing? And they say, no, because I've already sent them all the information ahead of time. So they're already sitting there. They, they see something professional. I get it overnighted to them. Otherwise, I email it to them, and it just blows their mind. And it's got to look good, too. So, I mean, keep in mind, I had this printed. So, I mean, it looks like something you go to the car dealership and get. And it's 150 point, which means there's I use all of these things here. So, mm -hmm. preemptive strike, baby. Yeah, yeah, preemptive strikes. Phenomenal. I, I love that. And that's, yeah, like in... And you took the time not only to put those things together, but you worked with a designer to make sure that it looks good, that it presents well. But yeah, it, it is a lot of the thud factor. I mean, people will not read it. If they do How read much? it, they will not understand it. That's not the point. The point is the thud factor. No, no. And I was saying, and you spent the money. That's an important element because yes. success leaves clues, right? So if you're spending money for this marketing material, people are thinking, well, this guy's got some coin to, to spend on his marketing. He must be doing well. And if he's doing well, I need him to sell my house. That's right. Oh yeah, and I mean these things weren't expensive. They cost me like a buck and a quarter a piece. So I mean, you look at it, you get a thousand. It's twelve hundred dollars. Sorry, my thing stuck under my cord was stuck <laughs> under my chair. It's it's twelve. It's you guys are horrible. You guys are actually horrible. It's twelve hundred bucks, but that's one listing. You guys are so bad. Oh, I thought man. I was the bad one. That's funny. All right, so this Jordan is asks, uh, is there a template that I could customize? Uh, there is in like for the people that go through Expired Mastery Elite. Yes, like Aaron, you had your designer put that together. So there's yeah. there's two formats. They're they're all customizable. So yes, editable. Um, it's editable. Edit, editable. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Eric says, what's the website? ExpiredMasteryElite.com. Uh, Vic asks, Aaron, do you only do expireds? Uh, and also, no. Greg, do you ever work with Fizbos? Aaron, let's start with you. I do. I started dipping my foot into the Fizbo water and actually kind of like it right now. So right now, I mean, the predominant source of business for me is expireds for sale by owners, referral and agent referrals. Those are pretty much my four main sources of business right now. Okay. Greg, you and the Fizbos. Um, no, there's really none out here. I mean, we have less of, we have about a month of inventory, so nothing is really expired or expiring. Uh, our problem is lack of inventory. So it's, I'm doing circle prospecting, beating up the database, um, you know, and, when our new product comes out, I think we should be launching this week or next week. I'm not sure. Matt and I are building a huge follow-up system for this new product that's going to be launching into the real, real estate world. Um, we'll probably be, be using that. And I'll tell you guys more about that when, when it comes out. I want to know. No reason to put the cart before the horse. Uh, I'll tell I you. I want to know. Don't worry, know. Bubba. Don't worry, Bubba. <laughs> You'll get your pinky. Um, oh, that's funny. But it, 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 Don't <laughs> use that word. Yeah. Pinky? Yeah, pinky? dude, I hear that. I hear yeah. that in the middle of the night. My pinky, oh. my, my kid. He wakes up. My oh. pinky, and I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping. How oh, dare you? The award of the year goes to Aaron oh, Wednesday, everybody. Yeah. Oh, that's How awesome. How dare you? Uh, but, but yeah, but it, it really PTSD. comes down to uh, I do whatever can be done, you know, here in my area. So I hired Gene. Gene is doing my online stuff. He's creating leads for me, you know, so I'm, I'm, I outsource that to him. So I, I work predominantly what works for me. I don't try to go out and just work whatever someone tells me it should work. I do. I work what does work in my marketplace. Do you have a lot mm -hmm. of physicals there? No, none. Hardly any. I mean, hardly any. I, I mean, I you could probably count on one hand how far. You know, how many wow. are. That's crazy.
All right. Wow. One, uh, we've got time for probably two more objections. We'll, we'll try to squeeze the second one in. Uh, we'll see. So let's go with this one. We are not ready. We want to fix up the house first. Greg, let's start with you. Great. I, I will give them a report called cost versus value. I'll put a link in it for the show here, guys. It is a PDF you can print out. You can customize it for the region of the U.S. And then you bring that over with them and say, okay, what would you guys like to do to fix up the house? Here is national stats, regional stats of what you could put into your helm and get what percentage out. Because of a lot of people don't know if they put $100 in, they only get $80 back. Well, that's a bad deal, right? Why put the 100 bucks in? So I, I go down this whole report with them, showing them where to spend their cash for the best return, therefore cementing me as the agent that has, has their best interest, and I save them or make them money instead of them just listening to Aunt June, who doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. She goes, you should probably paint, paint the whole house green. I love green. They're like, oh, my God. No, Aunt June, you've lost your marbles again. Go pick them up. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Uh, I don't, you don't, you don't, don't say it. You don't oh, say it. Just dodge your head and smile. Geez. <laughs> yeah exactly just just humor him just humor him that was, just, i actually like that one ant with the green color it was good i like it too it was Aaron, really, it was, I, I go to the ant with the green paint again i'd be like <laughs> yeah i just use what he uses it works every single time <laughs> i have marbles lost your marbles in the green paint go pick them up again <laughs> oh my god oh Lord, what are you gonna do like what is this velvet <laughs> what is this velvet okay oh my god <laughs> I don't even know how to answer this question now. Well, I'm sorry. What was the question? The, 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 objection. the objection is we're not ready. We want to fix up the house first. Oh all right. I, it all comes down to timing, and it's a question if it's an objection or a condition because mm -hmm. there could be certain things that need to get done in the house. You really have a choice. So the thing is, is what I'll tell people is it all depends. Like, So I'll ask them, like, so, Greg, what do you want to get done in the home? I want to sell my house. Okay, but no, what do you want to get done? Like, what type of work do you want to do? I think I should remodel it from head to toe. You know, I just don't like what my wife did to it last go around. And for my countertops are out, and, you know, we have hollow doors, and we have shag carpet, and my kids spilled milk and wrote on the walls with crayon. Okay, so how much are you thinking about putting into the house? 50 to 60 bucks. 50 to 60 dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You dig, oh. you, you, dig, you dig deep. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jeez. No. I, no, no, no. You dig deeper into the questions. I can never going to say that now without you, without having your faces, but you have to dig deeper into the question to figure out number one, it's all about motivation. What's their motivation? If right, they think yeah. they need to do all this stuff and there's no motivation to sell, then that's a condition versus objection. So first of all, you need to isolate what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they're saying they want to do this, that, and the other, cause they just feel like it and they have no interest in moving. That's a condition. That's not even worth your time. Yet mm -hmm. the thing is people think they need to put things into a house, which may make a lot of sense. So what I'll say is, okay, here's my suggestion is you want to put work into the property. Is that correct? Yeah. So when we work together, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and have my home stager come over, make sure that we're doing the right things and getting the best bang for your buck. As soon as we agree to work together, I'll come here with my home stager. We'll sit down and have a conversation about this. And then I'll just pause, let it hang because you don't want somebody who's not a professional. You want a home stager that's going to come in and say, do this, do that, do this, spend this, spend that. Because honestly, I don't know what you're going to get out of it all the time. All mm -hmm. that I know is if we're putting in a dollar, we better get $2 for every dollar we get out. Otherwise, it's a waste of your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, people are under the misconception that, you know what, sometimes marketplaces work right now in Danville. If, if you have a house that needs some help, dude, just put it on the market. You're going to get multiple offers on the home. Why spend your money when you can and, and the time? We don't know what the market's going to be doing when you know, a month and a half. We're going to be in the holiday season, guys. I mean, that's when stuff really starts to slow down. Let's get let's strike while the iron is hot. Let's get your home on the market. Let's what let's get you guys walking cash heavy and then figure out what your next move is going to be. And I. The people who aren't agents watching this, uh, the like three of you that are not agents that are watching this, um, listen to the real estate agent. We know what we're telling him about because we do this for a living. All right, you're not gonna go tell tell a chef that he's you went too far. I I love, I you love went too you, far. You guys should see my view. It's him in the big picture doing that, and the two years below him going like this. <laughs> <laughs> About but right. the, what, what I will say is paint and flooring. We're going to digress here. Paint and flooring are well worth the money. That's my opinion. It never hurts to paint, and it never hurts to clean carpeting. Right? <laughs> oh, <Christ. laughs> oh, man. All right, Gene, let's, uh, should we give the, a quick marketing perspective on that? Do you have anything to, no. uh, to put a nice bow on that? Had, Yo, listen, we, 
Yeah, when you're coming to me for the bow, things went awry, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the, uh, the the only thing I have to say to that in terms of marketing and maybe just destroying that objection before it comes along is there there was two things on that. Number one, we learned from the Derek Evans episode that listing agents that made any negative comment about the home before the listing paper were, were signed was drastically less likely to take the listing. And this is across multiple, multiple, you know, like, real life listing presentations where they pit three top listing agents against each other for a real client's listing uh, on television. So that's number one is don't make any negative comments about the home until you get the paperwork signed. Number two is you could go in and you could have that, Greg, you mentioned that there's a link for that and you put that in the Facebook comments for yes. the, the list of renovations. Uh, you could put something like that into your pre-listing package and then you say, great, this is, I get this question all the time. You see here in the pre-listing package that I send over, here are the things that really make the most difference. And you see all of these other things on the list. These are things where they, you don't actually make your money back. You may make 70%, 80%, but you're really not going to get your money back out of the house. I love it that you want to maybe fix it up the place, that you want to get it and sell it at the absolute top of the market. But renovating from head to toe and selling six months from now, I, just in my opinion, probably not your best option. And if you have some of those things ready, then it will help you handle that objection. But you still, I think that's still something that you're not going to eliminate that entirely because people, you can't deal with that objection before you show up and give them a dose of truth, right? Yeah. I mean, so, what, like Aaron said, empirical data. Look at exactly what's going on now. Data. We, we don't know what the market is going to do in one to six months, eight months, 12 months down the road. There could be a natural disaster. You know, North Korea's got fucking nuclear capabilities. That's scary shit. Uh, and they're coming for the West East Coast guys over there. So, I mean, that's... They're going to the Midwest. <laughs> they're going to the Midwest. Bye-bye, Nebraska! Bye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Deuces! <laughs> Deuces! Um, oh, we, we, I can't control what happens you know, in the future, but I do know what's happening today. And I can mm. work off of this data. What is your net? What's your goal? Where do you want to be? What's your time frame? You know, and you go off of the, what they want and need immediately, but steer them because you are the professional. You know, steer them for what's best for them, not for your pocketbook. That's where you really yeah. need to keep in mind. It's not about you. It's about them. If they can't go because they have a, a kid that just like a high school just went back into school, they don't want to sell because their daughter's graduating in a year and that's when they'll sell. Well, you can't push them out of the house, but you can draw them out in about nine months or however long school is. I don't know how long school is. Uh, I don't have too to. long. Not long Please. enough. So one one last objection, and then Aaron has to get back to uh, giving binkies to his three kids. Um, so <laughs> you haven't sold <laughs> you haven't sold any houses in our area. I love this one, Aaron. How do you handle this? Uh, yes, I have not sold any houses in your area. This is, I got to tell you, this is one I really don't get very much because the, the thing is people keep asking me a lot of these. I don't get them. So what I'll say is what's most important to you, the amount of properties that sold in the area, how much money I can get for you. The reality of it is, is you can drop me here, Chicago, North Korea, Canada. It really doesn't matter. I can sell property anywhere because this is what I do professionally for a living. This is where you're going to be value proposition. You know, right now we're selling our homes at 98.3% of list price and an average of 17 days on the market. So once again, what's more important to you the amount of money that we net you or if i sold properties in the area mm -hmm. i like that one a lot that completely yeah. takes the dog out of the fight out of the dog i mean they're like well more, more, most money like okay let's let's talk exactly turkey. let's do this mm -hmm. you can get around right around that um and i, I i'm kind of like basically what you do maybe without the stats uh because aaron can reel the reel those off <laughs> you guys don't sell homes in i made, quite I made them the time because it's a I'm, different market I'm, I made them up. Oh, it's, it's like Barney Stinson with the 83%? Yeah. Yes. It's whatever I feel uh, like at that time. I'm like, because you got to use exact numbers and especially odd numbers because they work very well. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. I, I'm just kidding. I don't make them up often. <laughs> often. Right. Often. Right. 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 Greg, how would you handle that? I don't know. Does that come up for you guys? Because you're giving them that 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 listing packet no. that you guys have shows that you've sold houses in like every conceivable possible <laughs> area of your entire like nine cities yeah. that you cover. Well, I mean, what I do, yeah, I, I just take this and I show them, if you guys can see that, the, the highly density density of the map. And I say, if you look really close, you'll see there's a, a lot of numbers in there because we couldn't show you everything. But you know what? We're expanding our territory and we're working with some wonderful folks like you in these in these new neighborhoods that we're working into. But as you can tell, we've sold thousands and thousands of homes. And I know that we can represent you and get you the highest dollar for your um, highest dollar for your home, 97.3%. 32% of the time, we're going to sell it within the first two and a half weeks when we market it, you know, with our methodology. And people are like, uh, I heard 97.23%, two weeks sold for high price. Okay. Mm -hmm. They don't latch yeah. on to, oh, I've never seen your neighborhood. I, I had to use GPS to get here. Okay. Yeah. 
and then need a GPS to get out. No, <laughs> you just don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where we are. Where are we right now? What state am I in? <laughs> what? 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 There's All cows. Right, Gene, there's let's cows. Uh, there's cows. <laughs> Did I pass a horse? Is that a goat? Um, the Amish. Yes. Yeah. That actually, actually is funny because, Greg, when I came up to visit you for the first time, you have horse properties like right around you. I'm like, I'm driving by. I'm like, was that a horse? <laughs> like, am I in San Francisco or did I like trans magically transport myself to Colorado at some point? Trans magically. Um, so Gene, let's again, let's let's put a button on this one. So you haven't sold any homes in our area. Uh, Gene, what is the how do you destroy that objection before it comes up by sharing your marketing plan, your marketing perspective? Why? I, by doing just that, prefacing it probably. My marketing, my marketing plan knows no boundaries or neighborhoods. I mean, this this game for us is about getting eyeballs on your property, and that's what I do. It doesn't matter if it's here in New Hampshire. I, mm -hmm. I, I target. I go after the people that are going to be interested in your spot. We sell it. The end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the end. I'm going to drop my. I'm uh, I, yes, I I would add to that that you could potentially get more specific and uh, and show them. We had a guest on the show. Younger guy, uh, I think his name was Adam. He's down in uh, Houston, I believe. And he would show them, like he actually had part of his presentation where he would show them exactly how he goes into Facebook and targets their neighborhood and runs ads. He showed samples of the ads. Like he really went into depth on like, hey, here's how we use technology to market your specific property, like to the exact demographic of buyers that we feel are most likely to buy your property. Uh, it was really, really good. Like it blew away uh, the people that he was uh, doing listing presentations for. He's, he's doing phenomenal. He's like, um, at one point, I think he was like the number three listing agent in the entire, you know, like his part of Houston or something like that. He, he was a really young guy, like 19 year really old. Really young guy, like 20, 21. Like he yeah. wouldn't let us say his age on the air because, yeah. <laughs> because it would have hurt his business for people to know just how young he was. <laughs> yeah, that would have created objections. But anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where you, you can destroy that in advance when you share your marketing plan or you can mm -hmm. use your marketing plan to deal with the objection when it does come up. But I love that. Having, having those arrows in your quiver is so important. If you go in there with, you know, not being equipped without, with that kind of stuff, with that kind of you know, marketing power behind you, it just makes those objections a lot tougher to handle than they should be. Yeah, yeah and listen, I, I want to bring one more thing. And Aaron did something earlier that was that was slick, and we kind of talked about it for a second and bypassed it, which was working on the fly. He said he had his iPad, and we, he does a CMA in front of the client. This may be something where if you're equipped to talk intelligently about all aspects of any objection, and you have to whip out your phone to show them the targeting for the face, not everybody cares about that, right? Mm -hmm. So. But if somebody says to you, you know, the last guy told me X, Y, and Z, oh, let me show you that, you know. So I like the flexibility that Aaron was, was, was showing you with that to be able – so you can just kind of drill in on anything that they object to on the fly, and I think that's that's powerful too. It's yeah. the best thing I've ever done. I mean I got to tell you, just bringing that with me, I've been using it for years because they can't say, well, what about 123 Smith Street? That one sold for $750,000. Nope, 500000 bitches, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got a pool. And it's got a pool. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you can't lie if it's right in front of your face. I love it. <laughs> nope, 500,000 bitches. That's Boom. the point of the show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. So, uh, so Gene, let's start with you. How do people connect with you and uh, why should they connect with you? Uh, I still haven't figured out why my wife is telling me all the time she made a huge mistake. So I can't help you with that answer. Um, wow. Well, but listen, I'm going to go back to my jingle, genevolpe.com. Right? That's all. <laughs> genevolpe.com is how you get me. Just email. Yeah, my, I told you my phone number is 267-88-VOLPE. Yeah, that's true. So I expect you to get uh, – guys, please stalk him. Send him some messages message. in the middle of the night. That's right. Sexting. <laughs> Sexting. That's <laughs> So get Gene forced. All right, Aaron, how do people connect with you? I don't know. J-Date? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was working on that one for a while. I'm like, what can yeah. I get that one out? Uh, I don't know. How the hell people connect me? Find me on Facebook, W-I-T-T-E-N-S-T-E-I-N, -T -T -E -E Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash got objections like got milk with no question mark or check out expired mastery and uh, i just want to say thank you so much guys for having me on here this is really fun today yeah <laughs> this is great yes i feel i feel much smarter since i walked on <laughs> don't worry the effect, the effect doesn't last it fades quickly thank you're welcome you. buddy you're welcome
Hey, you're uh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and what are your other two wishes? Here I am. Three deep. Oh, no, no, no. We're not going, Let's we're not, not go going down that path again. We we lost half our viewership at that it's point. Called, All right. It's called a Oh my God! All right, Greg. The Greg. The the uh, the Greg show. The show today is sponsored by. <laughs> not too far off. It is not the Greg show. No. 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 So guys, today's show is sponsored by officially sponsored by Get Now Business. It is our program that Matt and I have put together. So all of you guys who do not want to or cannot door knock or cold call and just absolutely afraid of rejection or an agoraphobe like Johnson and will not leave or speak to another humanoid, we will show you how to do that, guys. We're going to give you tips, scripts, techniques. We're going to take the blinders off of you. We're going to show you the business that is literally standing right in front of you that you guys can have access to for zero or low cost. So no cold calls, no door knocking. You have a budget of $500 or less every single month. We'll show you how to network and how to get out and meet and greet people. And Matt will show you how to use LinkedIn like a pro and a master, which I'm actually using, Matt. And I'm like, oh, Matt showed me how to do this. <laughs> really? Nice. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I really am. That's cool. Uh, I, want to, I want to know how did that do that. Oh, we'll show yeah. you. It's a yeah, I just, uh, I, so uh, I, I found um, the, the co-author of Go For No. We're having her on the show. She is uh, officially booked for a few weeks out from now. Found her, stumbled across her on LinkedIn. We're connected through a bunch of people. Um, so she's only, yeah, we're one step away from some really big people. And uh, and then found another guest for the show that, I, that was buried in my first level connections. We connected months ago and never followed up. Turns out she was a KW agent for 10 years. Uh, and so she has a deep real estate background before she moved on and started coaching and doing consulting and stuff like that. So we're going to have her on the show. She's actually a LinkedIn expert. So she'll have things to share that I don't know. And Greg, we do, both don't know. And for so sure. we're having her on the show. And so, yeah, it's been, it's been fun connecting with people through, uh, through LinkedIn. So it's, uh, it's pretty badass. So we talk about that in the fourth session. So essentially getting out business, like a simple four-step marketing plan you can execute to put commissions in your pocket in 90 days or less. Greg, you put the link in, it's getnowbusiness.com. You can also check out inspiredmasteryelite.com. And then how do they connect and follow us, Greg? Uh, they put trench coats on and they wait for us in the bushes next to your house. Well, I think Vic um, is. He <laughs> says, I can't I can't wait for your Rockstar Connect event on Tuesday. Are Matt and Gene going to be there too? I'm really excited to meet you guys in person. Sadly, Vic, Gene is on the other side of the country. I am I'll on the there. other side of the state. Yeah, Aaron, you're flying in. You're flying in for the up. Rockstar Connect. Yeah. <laughs> no, Rockstar Sadly, Connect. Sadly, no. It'll just be Greg. It will be well, an well, awesome well. event, and you'll know it is me at my event because I'm going to wear my really cool badge that says host on it at the event. Um, and then one more time, guys, I want to publicly – apologize for bitch slapping matt it was not intended it just came out very 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 rude so i'm sorry buddy uh, <laughs> oh, i really do feel bad i really Aww. do uh, <laughs> it shows that you have a heart and yeah, like that yeah surgically re-implanted <laughs> yeah exactly okay all right guys we are out of here you guys as always we're gonna have some more great guests aaron wittenstein you are a legend gene you are a legend you guys are both we are blessed to have you here i can call you guys friends so until the next show guys peace out ninjas we gone <laughs>